Hello, I am in Berlin in Germany. I am going to visit what is certainly the most important landmark in a city, the Berlin Wall. Few years ago, I came to Berlin for the first time. The story of the Berlin Wall wasn't new for me. I've heard a lot about it, and I knew someone who lived here when it was first built. But being here, I suddenly realized the obvious fact that Berlin was not just some historical place. It was a city where people actually lived. Berlin, as any city, is highly interconnected. If you live in a city, you would work someplace in a city, and you would have relatives and friends living some other places in the same city. When the Berlin Wall was built, people missed their jobs and families were split. The people of East Berlin became prisoners of the wall, living in a communist dictatorship and denied any hope of freedom. And in some ways, the people of West Berlin became prisoners too, surrounded by the wall and dependent on an unfriendly state for energy, water and resources. The wall divided the city for 28 years, an entire generation. When I first came to Berlin, the story of the Berlin Wall suddenly became real to me, fascinating and frightening. I felt like I understood the pain people had been through. I understood what a scar the wall is for the city and the joy people had when freely crossing the border, when finally the wall fell down. When I first came to Berlin, more than 20 years had gone since the fall of the wall. I was sitting in the train from my hotel in East Berlin, passing through the center of the city, to the exhibition I was going to in the West. I was wondering, will I see some differences between the East and the West? Will I be able to see where the border was without knowing the city? But I saw nothing. After 20 years, Berlin looked like one single city again. This time in Berlin, I decided to take a day to pay an homage to the city and walk the wall and take some pictures. I came to the Bernauerstraße underground station. It looks just like any other underground train station. But at the time of the wall, this was one of the border stations located between the east and the west. Here is what you see when you come out of the station, a grass pane. It looks like a little park in the middle of the city but there are metal poles and plates on the ground and pictures reminding the time of the wall. Before the wall, there were houses here. Today, the boundaries of those houses are marked by metal lines in a grass pane. After the wall, the city was divided in sectors. In the east, a Soviet sector. In the west, a French sector, an English sector and an American sector. The front wall of the houses marked the border between the French sector and the Soviet sector. The street was in the French sector, the houses were in the Soviet sector. So when entering the main door of one of those houses, you entered the Soviet sector. Checkpoints were placed in the streets at the border between sectors. When a communist dictatorship was imposed by the Soviets on East Germany, people began fleeing to the West and not only the inhabitants of East Berlin, but also people from East Germany and other communist countries. Fleeing to West Germany was illegal, of course, but there was little the communist authorities could do to stop the massive emigration and defection. You could easily enter through the back door of any of those houses and get out through the main door. There were hundreds of houses like that at the border and the communist rulers of East Germany wouldn't have enough soldiers to guard every house on the border. In year 1961, in order to put a stop to the people fleeing out of East Germany, the communists built the Berlin Wall. The wall was built overnight, taking the inhabitants of the city by surprise. The wall was quite simple to begin with, the streets crossing the border were spared with barbed wire fences. And all the doors and the windows at the ground level on a border were sealed by screwing them in place, forcing the inhabitants of those houses to use the back door and to stay in East Berlin. 
Later on, walls were built and doors and windows were bricked up, first at ground level and then on all levels, as people were still escaping from the upper levels using ropes. People living in the houses were forced out, despite the lack of housing in the city at that time. Finally, in order to make any escape impossible, the communists made an empty region along the border, the Death Strip. All the houses at the border were destroyed and a concrete wall was built. On the other side of the Death Strip, another wall was built, the Inner Wall. Watchtowers and bunkers and anti-vehicle trenches and obstacles were built in the Death Strip. Soldiers were guarding the strip along a patrol road with guns and dogs. Beside of them, nobody was allowed in a Death Strip. Big light poles were lighting the side at night. A signal fence was built to alert the guards of any intrusion. And anybody trying to get out would be shot by the soldiers. No chances of escape. After the fall of the wall in 1989, most of it was destroyed and the former border was marked by a pavement line. New buildings filled the former death strip, like this one. But here, the place of the death strip and some rests of the wall have been preserved as a memorial. A row of metal poles marks where the wall was. In the grass, you can see round metal plates. Those are incident markers. They show where somebody tried to escape and was killed or arrested, or where people managed to escape alive, most of them in the first year of the wall. These plates mark the place of a tunnel. Many tunnels were dug under the wall, many of them by people that had escaped East Berlin when it was still possible to help their friends and relatives in the East. Some people actually managed to escape this way before the tunnels were discovered by the communists. At this place, there was a watchtower. And here, there was a church. Despite the church standing in the way of the death strip, the communists first spared it. But in year 1985, the church was demolished. Some foundations of the church can be seen, and the bells and the cross of the tower bent by the fall. This chapel replaces the church today. Inside of it, you can see the cross that was once behind the altar in the old church. This is the Berlin Wall Memorial. It is a new building across the street. Inside is a little museum. You can read about the life of some of the victims of the communism and some of those who tried to escape. This is a metal spike grating. The steel spikes were designed to severely injure fugitives when they jumped down onto them, so they wouldn't be able to run after passing the inner wall and the signal fence. From the top of the Berlin Wall Memorial, you can see a part of the wall and the death strip as it was, with the inner wall, the electric signal fence, the patrol road with a watchtower, the lights and the border wall. Further away, a memorial wall for the people who died while trying to escape. The names of some people are known, many other aren't. A group of students standing in silence. I came to the end of the memorial site. Here is another underground train station, Nordbahnhof. This station too was a border station. It had an exit in East Berlin and another in West Berlin. There was a wall closing the entry of the station. Three steps into the station, there was another wall. Down the stairs, there was a third wall. The walls had signal fences that would alert the guards if anybody would try to touch them. Three subway lines were crossing the borderline under the wall, starting in West Berlin, passing under the east for a few stations, they would come out to West Berlin again. When the wall was built, those stations were isolated by walls 
and trains wouldn't stop at them. They became ghost stations. But the trains would still pass through, connecting a part of West Berlin to another part of West Berlin, passing under the east. Today, the ghost stations are normal stations again. I'm going toward the center of the city. Here, the borderline was along the water. The wall stood on the eastern side of the water. A street with grass panes. This was the best strip. A new building located at the border. Isolated elements of the border wall remember us of history. This street would be in the death strip. The building would be in the west. Today, the inhabitants of this house cross the former border when they go out and when they come back home. The line marking the former wall goes on and on. 155 kilometers, 96 miles. In the center, new buildings stand on what was the death strip. At this place, some tried to escape by swimming and they were killed. We know the names of some of those people. The parliament, it was in the west, but the wall passed just a few meters in front of it. The iconic gates, Brandenburger Tor. This monument was in the Death Strip, but it was not destroyed by the communists, because the Death Strip was very wide in this place, more than 150 meters wide. Just a few steps to the west is the place where the President of the United States of America, Ronald Reagan, told his well-known speech. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate, tear down this wall. It sounded incredible at that time. But only two and a half years later, the wall fell down. I'm still following the former wall, and here is the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe also built where the death trip was. My journey ends here. Potsdamer Platz and Leipziger Platz. This was one of the widest segments of the death strip. A desert in the middle of the city. But now it looks like a city again. Only a small memorial here remembers us about the wall. And those elements of the wall are covered with chewing gum on both sides. I finished my walk through the city along the Berlin Wall. I am still impressed of what crimes people were capable of just in order to impose on others the belief in an unworldly utopian ideology. And I am full of respect for all the people that lived this tragedy during 28 years.